Chapter 28 We marched another three days before we crossed back into Germany. The Czech people continued to help us as much as they could along the way, but once we were back in Germany, the doors in the villages were closed to us again, and the window shades pulled down tight. If the Germans didn't see us, they didn't have to think about us, but we left enough dead bodies in the ditches that they would know we'd been through. I made my bread last as long as I could, but there was no way I could march for another three days. Neither could any of the other prisoners, from the looks of our ragged ranks. How close was Dachau? How much longer would it take us to get there? Would any of us be alive to see it? The Nazis must have been thinking the same thing. On the afternoon of the sixth day, we came to a tiny depot where a train waited for us. The capo split us up, Jews in one train car, Poles in another, and we were loaded on. In a third car, the Nazis loaded in wooden crates. Our documents, one of the other prisoners told me. They send them along with us wherever we go, the monsters. They like to keep track of who they kill and how they do it. Seems like an awful lot of trouble to go through for traitors to the fatherland. The cattle car was crowded and unsanitary like all the rest, and there was no food or water but what we brought with us. At least we weren't walking anymore, which was a small mercy. A day and a night passed in the train. I drifted in and out of sleep, swaying on my aching feet, but was awakened by the sound of an explosion. Kaboom! It was close enough to rattle the car. Planes droned overhead. Russian? American? British? I had no idea, but they were dropping bombs all around us. Boom! Boom! Kaboom! The last of them hit so close we were all thrown forward. The train's brakes screeched as it slammed to a halt, and we all struggled to look out through the slats and see what had happened. Soon, word came to us from the Polish car behind us. The last car on the train had been hit with a bomb. No one had been hurt, but the car that held all our documents was destroyed. Ha! Someone laughed humorlessly. How will the Hitlerites know who they're killing now? Easy, someone else said. They'll know because they put all the Jews in this car and all the Poles in that car. When we get to Dachau, they'll just gas us and put the others to work. Yeah, he was probably right. They didn't know our names anymore, but we still had our Jewish stars on our uniforms, ragged and torn though they were, and we were all in the Jewish car. As long as they kept us together, they could hurt us all right into the gas chambers which gave me an idea. I found the Jewish star on my jacket. It was dirty and falling apart. Remembering my work sewing uniforms, I bit at the seams that still held it on my jacket until I could rip it off. They'll kill you for that, a man next to me said, watching me. They'll kill him for wearing it too, another man said. I didn't listen. I had a plan. The place where the star had been sewn on was cleaner and newer looking than anywhere else on the jacket, and you could still see the outline of the star. That would give me away for sure. I slipped my jacket off and put it on the floor, rubbing it around with my foot. When I picked it back up, it was filthy all over, including the place where the star had been. Good. Now at least I would look the part. When the train finally stopped outside Dachau, we were taken out of the cattle cars. As the Jews and Poles got off beside one another, I slipped from one group to the other. If the Nazis had lost our records, they wouldn't know I was a Jew unless I was standing with the Jews. One of the Poles saw me change sides, and he frowned at me. I worked my way farther into the group and waited, my heart thumping. If I was caught, I'd be killed. I remembered how back home in Krakow, people sometimes mistook me for a Gentile. I hoped the Nazis would be fooled. The SS officers made us line up and tell them our names and numbers. Prisoner B-3087, I told them. My name is Jan Zaloni. Zaloni meant green in Polish. My real last name, Grenner, meant greener in German. Zaloni made me sound more Polish, and it was easy to remember. The Nazi wrote down my name and number and nodded me on. I had done it. I was no longer a Jew to the Nazis. I was going to live. That boy's a Jew, someone said. It was the man who'd seen me cross over. He pointed at me. He came over from the other car when we got here. 
The blood drained from my face. A capo grabbed me and raised his club to hit me. Wait, I cried. I was born Jewish, but I never practiced. I lied. I never went to synagogue. All my friends were Poles, Christian Poles. I went to church with them. I'm not a Jew. If you were born a Jew, you're a Jew, the SS officer said. He marked through my name on his sheet. Put him with the others, where he belongs. The capo shoved me along to the group of watching Jews. None of them had said a word, not even the men who'd seen me take off my Star of David. When the capo had pushed me back among my people, I turned to look at the pole who had ratted me out. He kept his eyes on the ground and wouldn't look at me. Why had he done it? What difference did it make? It's not like I would have eaten food he could have eaten or slept on a bed he could have slept on. I was nothing to him, nor him to me. And yet, he had told on me when there was nothing to be gained by it. He had told on me for no other reason than that I was a Jew. The Nazis took our names and numbers and made new documents for us to replace the ones that had been destroyed before they marched us into Dachau. They would need them now so they could keep track of how they killed us all.